wanted to talk to you first about this trend of uh, inequality, income inequality rising, high cost of land. You've got people renting um, luxury apartment to uh, in towers and tall buildings and not living in them. Do you think there should be any sort of special uh, tax or uh, residency requirement or any policy to stop that trend? I'm an architect and I'm <laughs> not, I have no opinion on this because I don't think this has anything to do with architecture. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we uh, uh, have a building which was stopped uh, in New York uh, uh, 2006, 2007, when the crash happened, and uh, it's been uh, actually started up again. And uh, as you say, it has been from a more normal mixed use boutique hotel, uh, small apartments, uh, has been changed to a luxury apartment building and, uh, and uh, they opened the sales office uh, a couple of months ago and they already sold 30 percent. Uh, I think uh, uh, architecture should provide regardless of whether people live in, regardless whether what 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 level of comfort, luxury these buildings are, the best possible living conditions in there. I think this is what counts, and um, this is what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you wouldn't hurt those people if you collect any tax. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like change, you know. And but. I think what uh, you know, the, the general trend of building housing is, is one of the most important uh, in, in, in the world because we're dealing with a population growth which is horrendous. We're dealing with a concentration of these people actually wanting to live in urban centers. We have urban centers, which kind of the large ones in the world are kind of a mess in terms of what traffic and transportation does to them. And uh, we're creating a lot of mess with the waste we, we're creating. And we're using a lot of energy in, in these buildings. And, uh, and uh, how we solve the task architects, developers, engineers, everybody, con uh, contractors, is, uh, uh, needs to be a different way and needs, uh, and that's the real problem. Mm. It's not what people pay for and, and, uh, and we, we got to do it on all levels. We also got to do it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very simple level. I mean, we work on a master plan in Ufa, Russia. You know, the, mm. um, a one-room apartment is uh, 30 square meters, mm. uh, 300 square feet. You know, the, uh, a three-room, which is a two-bedroom apartment, is uh, is uh, 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 700 square feet. No, no. So, so I find this actually more interesting than doing a luxury building. Mm. Why? Because, because in a luxury building, you don't have to invent anything new. But mm. this building to make it comfortable, uh, not just in terms of the layout, but in terms of how you actually build it and that it is comfortable. Uh, the, so, something has to be invented. Do you think wood will be one of those technologies that will help I make? No, you would go and ask <laughs> me about wood. Uh, 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 I, I haven't uh, dealt with wood mm -hmm. as a construction material. I've, I've always considered wood a very precious material. Uh, uh, I think it has its limitations in terms of what it can do structurally and uh, and uh, I know there's some interesting work done, studies done, uh, how you could build taller buildings out of wood, but I don't think this is how the problem is solved. Mm -hmm. uh, On the topic of the post tower, what do you think specifically is the most important contribution of the post? looking back now, 10 years later, on tall building design? 
its legacy, basically. Well, I mean, compared to uh, the way the CDPUH uh, considers a tall building, the post tower wouldn't probably hardly <laughs> fall in the category. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I have said, I think, last year when I gave a lecture, or when I got the, uh, the, the, the Lifetime, Lifetime Achievement Award, Award that it, it doesn't really matter how tall a building is, and you know, uh, uh, and and it's it's uh, generally easier to do on a building which has still a certain scale and is is manageable uh, to do something innovative like we did on the post tower. You know, mm. you know? And uh, I mean, what you can do on a building. When I look back at my career for close to over forty years. The, 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 what you can do and, and do innovatively has a lot to do with the client. And, and, and uh, I mean, here we had a situation where the post uh, wanted to do uh, a headquarter building, which uh, makes a mark as one of the biggest logistic companies in the world. They just acquired DHL. They, they used to be a government agency. They became a, a traded private uh, company, uh, went public. And um, so the, the building became an expression of a progressive corporate uh, policy and mm. corporate recognition they sought. It came also important for the city of Bonn uh, as a statement that Bonn is now a business center and not any more a government center because the uh, government had decided to move the headquarter uh, uh, to Berlin. You know, and, um, and it was a time in our work uh, where we from some of the buildings we started in Germany, and I think this building could have only been done in Germany mm. because it's just in terms of use of techno technology in products, uh, the most advanced in the world. It, it not only in terms of the people who have the head and thinking this out, but also the people who manufacture it and who, who, who build it. And, um, and, uh, and you know, we, this was a time, uh, the sign started in the late uh, 90s, uh, where sustainability wasn't even a word, mm -hmm. you know, where, where it was our goal and the uh, client's goal to, to save energy, to, to, uh, but above all, besides the corporate statement, to create the most possible pleasant place to be in. You know, uh, so, so, so things are, which are very basic and which when you're m making the jump right now to, 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 to those super tall buildings right now, where we're talking which are you know, uh, 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 six, seven hundred meter tall, uh, uh, where, where, where this is not the issue. None of these tall buildings, let's just face it, uh, uh, can 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 be used as examples for 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 overall, you know, uh, 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 conforming to, to those issues, which any building ultimately needs to be charged with, and and they're, they're always the same. It's 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 how they fit in the in the context, how they how they uh, uh, are uh, fulfilling their use factor, how they use technology, and, and how they deal with the energy. Mm. You know, and uh, a lot of these buildings, you know, the, the, and I won't uh, name any names, the, 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 all the energy is used that they just stand up. Well, on the topic of energy and sustainability, as you mentioned, when the post tower was being designed, it wasn't a, a hot topic. Now, of course, it's ubiquitous, and so are some of the technologies that the post helped pioneer. 
Do you still think they can only be built yeah, in but, Germany? But, but see, the, uh, there's been a lot use of technology and equipment. The post tower is actually an example which used very little equipment. Mm. It, the, the, its most sustainable feature is actually uh, the design. And it's actually the structure, which is very efficient. And the use of natural resources, the, the Rhine water is used for cooling, which, which, which contributes to 80% of why we could reduce the energy consumption to a regular building of this type by 50%. Using the river to cool. Right. That, 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 that's the biggest factor. No? So, that we have daylight and don't use lighting. That, that we can open the windows at certain times and not use the mechanical system at all. Mm. You know, in, 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 in creating a comfort. So it's all, a lot of this resources are actually the free natural resources. And this will never change. And we, there's no photovoltaic, the, 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 the sure, and, and today you would have more efficient mechanical equipment and, uh, and, and uh, chillers and, and you know, cooling towers if you used it. But, but it, it was the way the building functions as a, as, as, as a living organism, you know, how the air goes through and how the air, which is not uh, used anymore in the offices, gets exhausted through the atriums and conditions those atriums. And, 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 and when you are in a building, you, you, you have a feeling that, that, that you actually connect it also to the environment, to the outside. You mentioned photovoltaic. I know you've worked with TransSolar pretty much yeah. throughout your career. Yeah. Do you think there's a more potential to integrate renewable energy generation into tall building design? Do you think it would work with the passive systems you mentioned, having active technology? Is there a balance there? Well, it's obviously more difficult you know, to do uh, natural ventilation on a building which is uh, 500 meters tall and a building which is 160 meters tall. You know. uh, I, I think a lot which was uh, possible in the post tower had to do with the German requirements that uh, daylight is kind of a, a, a legally uh, supported uh, 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 factor uh, which every workplace should be. You know, there are obviously some ways around. So this means the floor plates are small and it's easier to, to condition a building like this with natural resources. So, you know, and I'm, I'm totally aware that, that I, uh, when I say some of these things, that, that I'm not criticizing these other buildings. Uh, I'm actually frustrated about the tall buildings we did where we made the attempt to use these natural resources. It was generally not accepted by the client or not felt necessary or efficient enough. Mm. and you couldn't really fight it. Mm. When you have a floor plan with 4,000 square feet, right? And, and here we have uh, each one of those uh, uh, half shells on the post tower is about uh, 700 square meters. You know? So it's about a footprint of 14,000 square feet mm. instead of 40,000 square feet. And um, in, in some of in the lower levels uh, where there are interior spaces in the core, there is some conditioning necessary because they're not connected to the outside. Do you think that's changed? Are clients different now about accepting passive systems or reducing energy consumption? Or is it still a, a uphill battle? I, I, I think that um, you know, every, you know, we're doing quite a bit of work in China and, uh, and uh, uh, we we have one building which is only two, only 200 meters tall, <laughs> uh, where the client actually accepted operable windows. Mm. So, and uh, but but generally, when it comes to the design of the systems, uh, the, the the original demand for for something very sustainable and efficient uh, 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 makes way. For, for, for what is the most convenient way to do it. 
I mean, one of these buildings is a stock exchange, and the, the office portion of this is, is, is only a, a, about 40% of the conditioning, 60% are all the computers. You know, and, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, and and, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's a case-by-case -case thing, you know, that you have to, uh, you have to aim for, for, for what is actually feasible. You know.